And here we go. We're back again. And today we are joined by formerly known as Big Buddha, but I think you've got a new nickname in the works. Big Iron Rex White. It's more fitting, I think. To me, you'll always be Big Buddha. I gave you that nickname, and that's what you'll always be to me. It's like when you got an old teacher in school and you always call him like Mr. Smith, even when to you're me, like four. To me, he'll always be Marty's boyfriend. Who? <laughs> you remember <laughs> Marty from the bank? The short white hair. Oh, yeah, that's my girl, bro. For real. <laughs> Marty, yeah, she's my girl. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think she so works. Solid. I think she works at a different bank now, right? Solid. How, she's pretty old. She's a gilf. Solid gilf. gilf. <laughs> For sure. So Rex White, ladies' man, fighter. How you been? Good. How you doing? Hanging in there, Keith. You yep. know I'm pissed off at you because of the last podcast. <clears throat> I, I, I realized that after listening to it, you know, I asked you how your Christmas was, and you never asked how mine was. Really? You didn't care. Yeah. You just told me about yours, and then you just moved on. Eliza, <laughs> how was your Christmas? It was good. I'm having a baby. So, that's pretty cool. Having a little baby boy, right? The baby. He's having a baby. Well, you don't, don't reveal it, bro. It wasn't time to reveal it yet. Now you've got to edit this. Yeah. You're going to have to blank that out so nobody will know what you said. Damn old man, bro. You see now. Caitlin's going to kill you. All right. Where are we at? We'll, uh, we'll come back on right here. All right. So I think you should. I think you got to leave it in. You just got to like put something over your voice when you do it. Use he's some saying, of that editing he's wizardry. One word. He's having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to do that. All right, we'll add in a foghorn and just keep moving. No he's edits definitely, on this. He's definitely having either a baby boy or a baby girl. One of the two. So... Let's talk about the card coming up. We've got a lot of dates coming up. You're going to be a busy man this year, Keith. Now, let's let's kind of go over everything we've got going on coming up. What we've got in the works. All right. So, yeah, we've got a lot. We've got a lot coming up. So we've got March 9th at Catlisburg NLC 22. Then I need to take these off. We got to change my little schedule here. Then we got May 18th in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, then we're back to Bridgeport for June 8th, July 20th. Oh, here we here we go. We got uh, three events in four weeks starting starting here. So July 20th, we're at Catlettsburg, Kentucky, uh, and then August 3rd, we are in Lexington. And then August 10th, we're in Madison, West Virginia for a boxing show. There we go. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Don't have anything on the books for September. Um, I don't know what we're going to do for October because Justin Ball is getting married on October 4th. Um, then we got oh, November. So, yeah. So hold on. We got to go. going to hold off on events for Justin Ball's wedding, but I have a baby and you schedule three events. Right near the due date. I didn't know the. Due what are you date. trying to say to me? <laughs> I, I have I put Justin Ball's wedding on my fight schedule like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> whenever whenever they set the date, I put it on there. I won't. Oh, they, they were supposed to have been getting married last fall. I don't. And then they pushed it back. He must have got busy with arm wrestling season or something. I don't know. How far along is she, uh, Elijah? Caitlin is at 12 weeks right now. We're about three months through. Due date's in August. August, oh, August, baby. What's the Scorpio sign for August? Taurus, I believe. Taurus is a good sign. Taurus. Bull. I like Taurus. No, Taurus women are good. Taurus women are good. But Taurus, Taurus men, man. yeah. Taurus men are bullies. 
So do you believe in astrology? Is that what you're telling me? No. But <laughs> uh, every tourist female I've ever had a interaction with, I've really enjoyed. They've always been very sweet to me. I like asparagus, people. I have a hemorrhoid. <laughs> I like totals. Totals? I love so, totals. March 9th in Catlisburg, we got a huge announcement. I don't know if you guys saw the post. I know Keith saw it because he made it. We're partnering up with a barbecue place. That's yeah. pretty interesting to me. That's Looking pretty much Jay's. the only reason I'm coming. Where Steak and Jay's baby, they're gonna be doing the concessions at the fight. We'll have some of the best food around. Uh, Barbecue, get, yeah. So you got you got smoking Jay's in Ashland, then you got another smoking Jay's up in Morgantown. And I know a little bit about smoking Jay's. I love barbecue. Yeah, they got some good stuff, man. It's like some of the best best stuff around. I'm going down there. Uh, I'm going over to Ashland this Saturday, so I'm gonna get some of that. So does the commentary team get free barbecue? I don't know. You have to talk to them you about should, that. You should work that in the deal. You got to take pull, care I'm of your. I'm gonna pull a Jacob Ray. I'm gonna pull a Jacob Ray and say my help with the cage for free food and not help. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Jacob Ray. Classic. We Jacob should Ray. talk about that night, the <laughs> night from hell in Wayne, West Virginia. It didn't get any better when y'all left. That just left me to finish it. Me and Jack and Rebecca. Keith No is still angry at us. You know that, Rex? He's still I had to go. I could help. I would have. I was going to stay, but Myron had to go. It's Myron's fault. That's whose yeah, fault. Everything. Is. Everything that's happened to us negative in the past two years is Myron Morrison's fault. Yes. He's a bad egg. Mm. I don't know about that night. <laughs> So, yeah, we, uh, it was our Wayne event. What was that? Almost two years ago now. Yeah. And, uh, you had no help with the cage whatsoever. I don't know. People, I don't know if we've ever talked about on the podcast what a bear it is putting that cage up every event. Well, it's just really bad when you have places that you have to carry everything really far. And that was one of the ones. That was one of those. We had to, you know, carry it up the ramp, carry it through that kitchen, through that very narrow door, and then across the gym. So, and we didn't have a lot of help. So everybody was making these really long trips, carrying heavy stuff. And honestly, that's why we haven't been back. Um, to Wayne? Um, yeah, I like the venue. It's just. It's just well, really it's tough getting people. set up. You had well, somebody I mean, there. I don't want to say yeah. anything. You had somebody there trying to direct shit. They shouldn't have been trying to direct anything. <laughs> I, I, know talking talking about. About. I know you're talking about. Say his name, Elijah. Say his name. He's, he's, like, he's like Lord Voldemort. He, he, might, he like will not be named on this podcast. He's That's Lord eight. Voldemort, bro. <laughs> with a neck tat. Lord Voldemort with a neck tat, bro. You hear you give you give Lord Voldemort two hundred suboxins and a neck tat, bro. That's him. <laughs> give him a teardrop. <laughs> and a teardrop, yeah. Uh, and a really and a really bad Facebook addiction. That's what that's that's, that's Lord Voldemort. But give him a couple crimes on his record, you know, worse than uh, killing the Potters. Oh. So I just, I was like, See, where was I going with this? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I like the venue, man. Um, we might go back for boxing sometime. It wouldn't be bad carrying a boxing ring in there, but just carrying that cage, I, I don't want any part of that. Wayne uh, is a nice area too. Like it's a, I never knew about Wayne, but it's beautiful. Like all farmland, yeah. real pretty. Wayne, oh, yeah. real, wait, wait, you go down to Dunlow. Dunlow's real pretty too. All right, let's get Rex White's top three destinations to visit in West Virginia. Oh, I'm good at this. Dingus, West Virginia. No, I'm lying. Okay, <laughs> Summersville, Summersville Lake. They've got to be up there. Mm -hmm. Take the hiking trails and hike out to parts of the lake, and nobody goes to the big cliffs to jump off over stuff. I yeah. love cliff jumping, but it hurts me so bad because it pulls my fat up when I jump in the water and it. Really hurts really bad, uh, but I do enjoy it. Really, that Yatesville Lake. Okay, there's a place over in Marbone uh, called Top of the World. Big ass mount. It's old strip job on top mm -hmm. of there. Beautiful. Go 
Go up there and do some magic mushrooms. You never come down, I bet. Beautiful up there. That's true. You that's give true. me your third. That's unless, just da- unless, unless Dingus is in, unless Dingus counted. I gave you three. You so Dingus, Dingus, Dingus Summersville. I gave you three. I gave you uh, Summersville, Yates. Yatesville's in Kentucky. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, fuck. Chattonville. Hearts Community Center. Hearts Community Center. <laughs> <laughs> That's go our down. old stomping I ground. Go down to Hearts and see Danny. Oh, we got 10 minutes left on this recording. He's gone. Is he? Yeah, he's gone. That, they that's are one under the new ownership world. at the Hearts Community Center. Really? You know, we've been talking a little bit about bringing back Underdog Fight Academy, speaking of the old Hearts Community Center. Take a look. What was that? What's Underdog? Our old gym. You know what it was. You were you were really the uh, mastermind behind it all. Hey, did you see my book, sure. my boy Jeremy competing Pete, in Tuck Man? Who is it? Yeah. Jeremy Jeremy Browning Jr. Did he fight in Parkersburg this weekend? Yeah, it didn't, and didn't tell me, bro. Didn't tell me he's going to burn fight. It hasn't trained a lick. He went to, he went two and one though. I mean, he did better. He's got nice. better. But it, the lack of sparring and stuff, you can just see it all over him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, Germ has nuclear power, bro. He could, I mean, if he would train consistent yeah. like he was with me, when I had the gym mm-hmm. go down there, man, he'd be, he'd be really good. He could hurt people really bad. You know, it's wild seeing how far you've come in just a, a, a few years now, just about, what, three years you've been involved with the sport. Maybe. Now you're like you're analyzing young fighters. You're like, yeah, he's got a lot of potential. He's doing good. It's strange how, what you've done in so little time. You're getting ready to uh, come upon your second fight. I think you're planning on August. Yeah, August twentieth. I'd like to get back in there again. But that fucking injury with my arm. I'm, I tore my own bicep. I hit Darius Johnson so fucking hard in the face that I tore my own bicep, man. And I, I, I got no warm up because Keith fucked the card up in the back. <laughs> Not me. Somehow. Somehow put, man, I wasn't ready, bro, at all. And I got no warm up. So I went out there and just started swinging. I always, I always forget I could hit hard, man. And hey, like, we, had, we had that bike card posted all over the place. We were going right. Well, it was it. messed yeah. up, bud. But, <laughs> no, I think, okay, but, I think you guys were anticipating a, uh, an inter, uh, intermission at some point, and we didn't do an intermission. Something. I don't know what happened, but yeah, yeah I, I got, we were we were playing the music, and I'm over here like, where are they at? So, but yeah, yeah at, well, the other guy wasn't hard. ready either. But um, oh that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to get in there again. I want that kickboxing title. I'd like to get it. All right, we're back. All righty, so yeah, I'd like, like to get that kickboxing mm-hmm. title. For a super heavyweight, and go from there. I'm not sure what my or my career would take me as a fighter. Maybe I won't never fight again. Maybe I, I don't know. I enjoy it though. I, after, but it's just, it's just been a rough time here recently. Like I've had a lot of personal stuff, my family and stuff. But but I'm ready to get back in there now. Yeah. But what, what about what about Keith Nowens' his uh, comeback fight again? Bro, it's never gonna happen. Why? Wow. I don't know. I'm like 300 pounds, man. I've been uh, I've been in the gym. I started I started training last week. Uh, no, they asked me to fight Jared recently, but I told him no. Like I don't I don't need to be fighting anybody. Um, Who asked you to fight Jared? Uh, Chase. Ugh. I want to fight the Able Brothers. I'm making a call out right here. I want to fight both the Able Brothers at the same time. Do it on street street beefs. Two on one. I swear to God, I would. I think I'd win, too. I tell you what, you know, it's it's hard to speak ill of other commentators, but those guys suck. Horrible. As, not, not as commentators. Ooh. I've never heard them, but just as human beings. <laughs> Horrible human beings. I, oh, yeah, he I called CJ a fat inbred, bro. I don't know what he all this is. He, 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 Martin, he told me they were bullying him online. So, well, see, know. that's what that's why I say that. You know, the, the, you know, Heath Martin. Everybody knows Heath by now. To be bullying him, that's that shows what kind of person you are. You yeah, know, so I, I mean, I it's, haven't seen any of it. Um, I don't know what was said. I don't know 
you know, I don't know. This just secondhand coming, you know, coming from him. Um, so I don't know what was said. I don't want to. They're just they're they're tiny, small, weak people who are very insecure. I you called them so? out to a two on one fight when they were uh, uh, making fun of um, Doran and uh, the uh, his buddy um, Ricky. What's his Ricky. yeah Ricky? So yeah. that upset me, and I messaged them direct. I, I added both of them into a group chat with me, telling them to fight me, and uh, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> How many promoters <laughs> do you see doing that? <laughs> it's like that's. You see Dana White when people talk shit on Twitter, like, all right, let's box. Let's fucking fight, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, hey, apparently he's a pretty good boxer back in the day, Dana White was. He came well, from at, the one streets, point, uh, at one point, at one point, Dana was scheduled to fight Tito like Ortiz. Tito Ortiz, yeah. The Tito no show or something. Uh, he dropped, no, he yeah, Tito ended up pulling out. That Dana White said he was training with a bunch of heavyweights at the time. And but no, case yeah. I think Sorry, uh, the Able Brothers, they're, they're they're just like I said, man, they're small, weakly insecure people, and I don't think I don't think they deserve our time to talk about them. You know what I mean? That's yeah, what the are. professional broadcaster I am. I just trail off in the middle of a point, right in the middle of the podcast. Anyway, yeah, that's a crazy story about the UFC. Dana was scheduled to fight Tito. He was all for it. He even went jumped through a bunch of hoops to get the medicals and stuff, and then mm -hmm. Tito no showed. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Dana's pretty sleek. Dana, my, my, my yeah, I don't know if you know Dana Tito. White left. <laughs> he left Boston because he was on the run from the mob. That's how he ended up out in Vegas. Something over he was teaching. He was uh, coaching a cardio kickboxing class or something, right? And uh, they wanted him to pay protection money. And he yeah, they were like extorting him, and he uh, it ended up getting <coughs> so serious. He's like, I better leave town. That's yeah. exactly how Keith No went to Lexington. Yeah, Super most good. people don't know that. You know the the Chapmanville mm -hmm. Mafia was after him. Yeah, Jeremy Tony, <laughs> Jeremy Tony. Mikey Mitchell <laughs> and Jeremy yeah, Brown. <laughs> Jeremy, to Jeremy <laughs> Tony went to all the speedways and opened a tab in my name and was getting Mountain Dew. And he just built the tab up so big I had to leave the tab. Right. <laughs> I know we've talked about this on the podcast before, but the Mountain uh, Dew Challenge. Do you know about this, Rex? What? We put Jeremy Tony in the hospital at one point. Wow. Keith No put Jeremy Tony in the hospital. Uh so yeah, we were built we were setting up for an event and uh let's we'll see, we already had the cage together and I asked Jeremy if he wanted to go down. Jeremy hit me up wanting uh wanting to make a little money. I was like, All right, come down and help me get the chair set up. It was just me and Jeremy. And uh actually uh not, a couple of my friends uh came over. Um Um, the Hoosier family from Hearts came over and helped me out a little bit. Kelly and her boys, I think Shane, Kelly and Shane, and her boys came over. But uh, yeah, Jeremy came over with me. We were, we were setting up the chairs and some stuff, tables, things. Um, and uh, anyway, Jeremy had like two bottles of Mountain Dew with him. I had, this is back when I was drinking a lot of Mountain Dew, I brought a 24 case. Well, Jeremy chugged his two, two liters of Mountain Dew. Uh, apparently, he was pre gaming. For the Mountain Dew Challenge, he was just warming up. Then he drank. He proceeded to drink my entire twenty-four pack of Mountain Dew. Oh, he said God. he said it was a challenge, but he didn't like record it or anything. He just drank it, and then he ended up in the hospital like something with his kidneys <laughs> that night. Bro, listen, Jeremy's a good little worker, bro. Listen, yeah, you remember that uh, right. party I had, Elijah? Oh, listen, oh my God, case is funny. I had this little party get together at my house one time. And we, I invited Jeremy. Everybody come here at six o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Perfect time. Well, it's about three. It's about two forty to eight. I'm, I'm getting ice for the for the beer and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I get a call on my phone. It's Jeremy Tony. Party starts at six, right? He read it. Hey man, I'm hey 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 buddy. Uh, uh, I'm lost. I was like, what? 
bro, he rode his fucking four-wheeler from Crawley, from Crawley, from fucking Crawley Creek all the way to Dingus Mountain, bro. So for people yeah. who don't know, how far is that? Oh, it's fucking, bro, that's literally like 40 miles. And he <laughs> come there three hours early. I'm like, well, fuck, I got babysit Jeremy Tony. Well, I didn't want him to drink beer because I was on a lot of medicine, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I gave him one beer, bro, and he drank this beer for five hours. It's one beer, right? But it's basically five hours. And he comes to Meyer. First time he ever met Meyer, and he goes, Hey, how you doing, man? Nah, I shouldn't say it. It's never mind. I shouldn't say that. It's fucked up. But <laughs> you, you, you can't. You got to edit that part out. I know exactly what you were getting ready to say. He, he talking to Meyer, and he goes, Hey, man, how you doing? And mine's like, hey man, how you doing? The Meyer didn't know he was, you know what I mean? And he goes, My mom used to lock me in a closet when I was a little kid and leave me there for hours. And Meyer's like, Oh, out of nowhere. Just like out of nowhere. Mine's like, Oh, look, look at the lies. He's like, Fuck. And I was just like, like What the fuck do I say? You know what I'm saying? He's telling the truth. Like, you can't fucking. But it's. it's, it's I feel it's guilty funny, for though. laughing. We Whoa. gave him a beer though. It's, finally, it's, it's the context. Him, of like, it. You've been drinking that beer for five hours. And Jeremy goes, It was hot, bro. We hot beer. He goes, <laughs> he goes I get gags and throws it over the hill, bro. <laughs> throws it over the hill. <laughs> He's like, Ah, that was good. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jeremy Browning at that party was wild too. <laughs> He was off the, the rail. <laughs> Did he show up and say he's not drinking? And then he got hammered. Oh, he showed up drunk. Oh, oh he hammered. showed up drunk. <laughs> say he quit drinking. I remember he was some, some was random ass dude was trying to find Elijah. Some random. Oh dude. my god, Mikey Mitchell was there, and Mikey's friend Dakota something kept uh, trying to tell me that he wanted to teach me about what Muay Thai is. And he yeah. annoyed me so much that we almost fought. But, but it's, this guy couldn't fight, Keith. Listen, me and him were like fake shadow boxing, whatever you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I did something. I was like, boom, boom. So that would have landed. I said, that would land, knock you out. He said, no, it wouldn't have. He said, I would have landed too. I said, yeah, but I hit harder than you. He goes, no, you don't. <laughs> I was like, you're 180 pounds, bro. I definitely hit harder. He's like, bro, no, you definitely don't. I said, I'd knock you out. Then he, then he starts telling Elijah, bro. He just didn't lie. He's like, I think I knocked him out too, bro. He's like, I think I knocked Elijah out too. That guy was the worst, bro. Fuck him. Who that guy is? Dakota, I think. Dakota, fuck you. Come get it. Any he was supposed you know. to fight for us at one point, and uh, I was. I just remember I was matchmaking at the time. I was like, I'm going to give him the hardest fight I can. Rick Randolph, by the way. Rick Randolph immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Chase Stafford right away. <laughs> Mate, Chase never cut 30 pounds of water, bro. You get him in there. <laughs> tell that, tell that guy Rick Randolph, we should give him a shout out. The Beast, he's got a podcast of his own now. Really? Hey, yeah. I like his. You ever see his motivational shit he posts? I do. I like it a lot. I comment on some of it. Where's Rick? Is he on YouTube or something? Facebook and TikTok. Facebook. That's Rick's an Facebook interesting dude. He really is, and like he's so talented. I think he's yeah. he's definitely maybe the most talented guy we've seen in New Line. Yeah, one of them. He's one my age. You give, give, give your top he's five, Keith. Yeah, he's an old man. It's even more amazing. Keith, give your top five most talented fighters of a New Line ever. Top five most talented. Yeah. Oh boy, you put me. They ain't got to be in order. Just off the top. Uh, on, Chase Thomas, he's got to be on there. Heath That's Martin. <laughs> Darius Johnston. Darius Johnston. <laughs> CJ, CJ Matthews. William uh, Myers. William Myers. William Myers. Todd Adams. <laughs> Do you want to throw, Todd, want to throw Todd on there, too? No, I love Todd, bro. Yeah. Todd's one of the nicest dudes around. Like, yeah, I'll I tell you him. what. No, you know, hey, got, number one. Uh, our boy Steve Walden. Oh my God, he's uh, dirty. You're dirty for that. I Steve think Walden get, reached out to me him. not long ago. Steve's doing pretty good, soon. I believe. Yeah, and he's he recovered from mesothelioma. Hell yeah! You know that's pretty miraculous. Hell yeah, man, that's good. Mesothelioma. Yep. 
Steve Steve Walton Walton came down with a bad case of mesothelioma before his last fight. Had to pull out short notice. Guys, could y'all excuse me for just 10 seconds? I need to let my dog Absolutely. Go. Get I'm out of here. Pause this. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Brief intermission. Right. So, um, Rex, we're going to get your picks on a few of these fights. Uh, I know you know some of the guys. You may not know everybody. Um, we'll go <laughs> right, <laughs> to, right to the main event. Jeremy Carter, oh, yeah. Justin Richwine, professional boxing. Six rounds, heavyweight. Are we starting at the bottom? Well, now we're here. Yeah, I figure we won't look at all of them. Uh, we'll look at no, no, no. I, I, I start, start at the bottom of the card. Yeah. Okay, so you want my pick main, on that main event? You know, main those event. Boys well, you know, <coughs> I want to give a little bit of insight. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a, a heavyweight boxing belt, and we've mm-hmm. seen Jeremy. Karshner, he throws heat, bro. You know what I'm saying? He throws fucking heat and he wants to take your fucking head off yeah. the entire time. Saying, and he does. Just rich one can keep a hell of a pace. But mm-hmm. Karshner, in his last fight with Alex, he didn't seem gassed out after the first, second round. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he went six he rounds and pace, good. You know? Mm-hmm. That's a really good... That's, that's going to be a lot better fight than people think. Oh, yeah. Rich one looks a lot more technical, but when Tim Dunn put the pressure on Rich one. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but Rich Pond can fucking take it, too. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you got to think that was it. kickboxing. That was a whole nother world, and the biggest weapon that was used in that fight were Dunn's leg kicks. Those low kicks Dunn were, was landing were crazy. Dude, they're brutal. He, 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 broke his own, he broke his own foot kicking him. Jeez. I think... Uh, Tim Dunn, talk, talk about an iron wheel, bro. He has an iron fucking wheel. That guy, I think this fight would have been a lot more easy to figure out, though, if we hadn't <laughs> seen that last fight with Karshner where he went the distance. That was something we always wondered about him, if he could make it all six rounds, not gas out, because that's something he said he had trouble with in the past. Yeah, now, leading, up to, that, leading up to that, he had six straight fights where he knocked the opponent out within two rounds. But look at who he fought, though, too. But, but both of these guys are professional fighters, and they're experienced, and they're they're going to... The thing about Rich Juan, he's not going to go brawl Karshner. He's smart. You know what I'm saying? He's not mm-hmm. going to brawl Karshner. And Karshner is my honestly with the power. I think Karshner might have the power advantage. Honestly, he throws big winging shots, but he'll knock you knock you fuck out, bro. He definitely will. That's gonna yeah. be a better fight. People think. I think. I think Rich one's a little bit more technical, but I'll give the power side to Karshner. I think. The I, gas think yeah. I think it's a good match. I think it's a, a great match. I think it is too. I think it's one of my favorite pro boxing matches mm-hmm. we've had on the line, honestly. And it's one I was really disappointed in when it fell through a while back. I was yeah. excited about that one. As far as picking, it's hard. It's a hard one to pick. Even, you know, I have my ideas. I think that Rich Wine is a smart fighter. I know that he's not going to be anything like Alex Davis. I don't think that Karshner is going to be able to approach him like Alex Davis. At all. And I Not think Rich Wine's definitely going to be able to push Karshner's gas tank more than Davis was. Yeah. And Karshner's got a slick jab. He does. He has a slick jab. He can catch Karshner coming in a lot. I'm going to give it to Rich Wine. Uh, I'll respect Tim Dunn as, as I love him, but I feel like Tim Dunn and Jeremy Karshner are two di- very different animals. And I, I give my pick to Rich Wine. But I wouldn't be surprised if Karshner pulled out the fire, too. You know what I mean? It'd be a good you know, that's a f- I mean, I'm a fan of both of these guys, man. I get, you know, I used to be a huge fight fan, <sighs> UFC, everything. But now that I'm more so involved in the regional scene, I follow these guys a lot more than I do the, the higher-level guys. I mean, other than, like, you know, I'm still a fan of, like, Tyson Fury, Wilder, Joshua, Usyk, and – uh I, I don't know. I probably couldn't name 10 UFC fighters right now. But, um, I mean, I like watching the big fights still. But, like, this to me is a big fight. Um, as far as, like, the regional scene, you know, these these guys, they're active here. Um, you got the New Line Boxing Champion fighting the New Line Kickboxing Champion. This is a fight that I get, I get excited about. It's funny how that changes because I was like you. I used to watch every UFC card religiously. Mm-hmm. And now lately... Yeah, I'm not watching them as much. And like you say, when you announce Tim or when you announce Rich Wine versus Karshner or Tim Dunn versus Rich Wine, 
I'm like, oh my God, that those are the fights I'm excited about. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, part of it's I know those guys too. It's kind of like back back around the early 2000s when like Fedor is announced, like Fedor versus No Gary. You're like, what? You know, I'm like that with stuff like this now. Except I'm. It was weird. <laughs> except like, I'm the guy having, matching them up. But having Tim Dunn fight was like that. Like we'd yeah. heard about him for so long, and it was like it was, that, it was like Fedor coming over to the UFC or something. <laughs> it was like a big deal. Yeah, that's why I, I, I want to talk there's, about there's that fight. Bro. There's a question I've got for you, and I think a lot of people might have this question for you. After Tim Dunn versus Rich Wine, that fight ended in a draw. Yeah. And so the belt goes back to Rich Wine. Those are the rules of a draw. But a lot of people weren't happy with that decision. A lot of uh, people thought Dunn won that fight. It was so close. And yeah. I wonder, are we going to ever see a rematch between those two? I'd love to see it. I don't know where Dunn's at if he wants to do it again. He Rich Wine, Rich Wine is usually a guy who's down for any fight. I wonder if he's he, is he up for a rematch. Rich Wine's up for him. Tim wants it. Tim wants it. What's the rematch? So when are we going to make that happen? I think that needs to. happen. I, yeah, I didn't know Tim. Tim wanted the fight the last time I, I spoke think, to him. He sure. was last time I spoke to Tim. He was kind of looking into doing some other things because Tim's Tim's uh, uh, Tim was really upset with the judging on that fight. And so we had a talk about how a lot of the judges have never fought. Um, and it would be really nice to have some, some judges that have been in there know what's going on. So that's the route Tim was looking at going, you know, looking into getting licensed as a judge and, and uh, going in there, you know, putting his expertise to use. And uh, I think that, that would yeah, fantastic. The, make a fantastic judge. But I'll tell you what, I would be, sorely disappointed if we didn't see him fight again i would love to make that fight again um yeah i, I believe guys, I'm, not, I'm not for sure but i'm i believe that i heard tim say he wanted it back but i'm he's trying to heal because he broke his foot because he kicked hard yeah hard. that's true he, he, needed, time. he needed some time off and he's gonna need time to get back and uh and get his body ready so I'm not you know, sure. and it's not been that I'm long i mean that was sure. what four months ago not even four it's three and a half months ago so I'm pretty sure after uh, who's got our heavyweight boxing titles? Karshner holding Karshner. it right now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure after Karshner's fight with Davis, didn't Thorne Hensley come out of the woodwork and say he's coming for that belt? He wants. I it. think. I think. Yeah, later in the year. I think he's I, had some injuries too. Yeah, that's one thing about Thorne. You know, he's getting at the point in his career. Like you see that with a lot of fighters who've been doing it a long time. Anytime he's training hard, he, he picks up an injury. It's just mm -hmm. bad luck. Uh, yeah, he like blew his shoulder out holding pads for Tyler Gerald, right? Like holding mitts. Well, that's Tyler understandable. Hitting a mitt and it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's, well, that's Tyler Gerald. Like seeing Tyler Gerald, you're like, well, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 We need to design a robot to hold mitts for Rex and Tyler Gerald and these big <laughs> dudes. You just need guys their size that know how to hold mitts. <laughs> there ain't none. <laughs> <laughs> How tough is it for you, Rex, to find sparring partners right now? To, I, to, to find sparring partners that I can go con good contact with, it's pretty hard. But, I mean, like yesterday, I sparred with Chris. Chris, did, Chris this, this is not from a punch. This is not even from a punch. This is from an elbow. Chris threw a left hook at his elbow. He's so sure he has to jump up and hit me, man. And I pulled back, and it just his elbow caught me. And Blind, don't, don't, don't foul, but like it, it's pretty hard to find like real, real, like real sparring. I, I go to yeah. Florence for that because I get beat up every time I go up there, so it's really good for me. Yeah. So moving down to this co-main event, uh, I know you know Garrettson. I don't know what you know about McBride. I know McBride. So the, yeah. Okay. So we've got this is a pro MMA fight, um, a fight that almost happened years ago, like. Year. Probably didn't almost happen, but it, you know it could have happened. They were both uh, active at the same time, um, and then uh, McBride stepped away for several years. Garrison did too, but not quite as long. Um, but yeah, so well, pro well, MMA heavyweights: Stephen McBride, Matt Garrison. What do you think about this one? Well, this fight here. So you know, Garrison has fought on some big cards, you know, and Garrison mm -hmm. has a lot of experience. But here's the thing: I, I haven't seen Garrison, Garrison in a gym. He was messaging me recently about being in a gym and I told him like, my gym's not open anymore and he messaged me he says there's no gym around around him that want to train train with him 
or that want to train him. There's a lot of, there's a lot of gyms in Charleston. I've, I know of, I know two of them that are really good, really good gyms. And uh, I I know he's hitting the weights hard and he's looking good, looking slimmer and strong as fuck. But as far as training, training, I don't know. People don't like to just count Steven out, bro. I didn't crack. You know what I mean? Yeah. He can hit hard, man. That, I think that'll be a dog fight. It, it's it's a it's boxing, right? MMA. Yeah, and, uh, it's McBride. Oh, MMA. Um, yeah, Stephen, I believe was eight and one amateur MMA. Uh, see, I don't know much about MMA now. I don't yeah. know much about that. Well, Stephen, so, as, as, as far as Stephen, uh, as far as Stephen's jujitsu background, like, I, what's uh, who's he training under? Um, he's got. I think it's the Japanese jujitsu. I think he's a brown belt, but he also does sambo and judo. Um, he's got some jujitsu, but but one thing Stephen has is a whole lot of wrestling. He he was a wrestler. Um, I don't think he, Garrison has much of a ground. Uh, didn't you tap him out? Garrison Garrison's got uh, got some jujitsu. Is Garrison has a purple belt under Butch Hiles? He's solid, and but I'll tell you what, uh, with Garrison, if McBride's a wrestler. I feel like that's going to cancel out Garrison's ground game because I've wrestled with him. You know, he's not got a huge wrestling game. He can take you down, but I wouldn't call him a wrestler. I would say that this fight will take place on the feet. Yeah. The I'll only thing so about the only thing I say about like guys this size is like usually whoever gets top position like keeps the top position. Uh, uh, I think, especially, I think especially, especially if they get tired. Come out of who's in better shape, too, man. I think it's going to yeah. be who's better. They're both you, worth we, it. We know they're, 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 they're both worth it. it. That's they're one, one thing we've seen is that Garrettson in his last few fights has a tendency to come in out of shape. You say yeah. he's lost a bunch of weight, though. He's he's looking like he's in better shape than we've seen him the he last did. few uh, fights. You can see it. The vid he posts videos and pictures. I mean, he's definitely – he looks more fit than the last time I saw him compete. He definitely does. And you got to think, I'm, like, 10 years ago, you know, maybe less than 10, Matt, it's the same thing with McBride. It's a really interesting story of this fight. Both guys a decade ago were bad men in West Virginia, people that yeah. everybody knew about. They were the next big thing, and they were supposed to fight back then. You know, they were kind of lined up to fight, and mm -hmm. now we're going to have it 10 years later. Both of them are at a totally different stage of their career. It's very interesting. Yeah. How old is Steven? Uh, I believe he's early thirties, if I'm not mistaken. He's not really? that old. Yeah, he was young. Stephen was like a super nice young. guy. He got a lot of experience as well. I can't make a. I'm. I'm going to give it to. I like Stephen a lot. I'm going to give it to Garrison. I know Garrison. You know what I'm saying. And uh, I think Garrison needs a win as well. He, he, he took a loss to um, Slocum. Yeah. Correct. And. That was, that, was a fight. Fight. that was a good fight. Yeah. I think that was, was an fight, excellent yeah. fight. Like two vets in fight. that fight that mm -hmm. just went to war. I'm going to give it to Matt. I'm going to give it to Matt's decision. Just decision win, Matt. I would like to see Garrettson and Slocum fight again because they are uh, they fought twice. Garrettson won the boxing and Slocum won the kickboxing. I mean, settle it in MMA. I don't know. <laughs> you um, know, it seems like there were talks about that after uh, after that kickboxing match. So There knows, were talks and Slocum... Slocum would be up for another boxing match, but he said Garrettson's leg kicks were nasty, and he doesn't want to feel that again. Um, Garrettson's got some dude's kicks. got tree trunks for legs. Yeah, yeah. yeah he does. But uh, Slocum said he would uh, he would absolutely uh, box him, but uh, he didn't want he didn't want any more of those kicks. Well, that's no uh, fair. I think they've got to do <laughs> MMA. Got to do MMA. You've already done the other two. It's like right, the triple Slogan's wanting to get that boxing match. He lost the boxing match, so he's wanting to get that back. So he beat him in kickboxing, but you know, it's not like you didn't really redeem yourself because it's a different sport. You know, so. speaking of uh, Slocum, that makes me think we ought to talk about uh, former teammate of Slocum's, Matt Adams, his BKFC yeah. debut. I think we all three watched that. Yeah. Warrior. Oh, God. Warrior. Yeah. And fought. That guy he fought, is, I could see that guy being the BKFC heavyweight champ. And Matt was blasting him like shots that would put other people out. Like, I, I don't see how that guy kept coming. That guy could fucking take it, man. Yeah. He hit hard, too, bro. He hit hard as yeah. fuck. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a UFC champion, or not a UFC champion, UFC veteran. Also, he's fought at the top level. He fought in the PFL. 
that's a guy that they brought Matt Adams in thinking he's going to be an easy win for him. We're going to get that's, him yeah. in the AFC with definitely, a good knockout. Definitely was not an easy win. And I think uh, that guy's next fight will probably be an easy win. Uh, but Matt Matt scared him. I believe Matt scared those people. Um, oh, I guarantee it. Matt's because Matt was winning that fight. Yeah. Up until Matt took that knee. And you know his gas tank failed him. That's that's yeah, all that happened. Yeah. He fought the perfect fight against a monster, and he surprised everybody. Like I think we all knew. I think everybody yeah. who's been around Matt and trained with him knew he had the potential to do big things in bare knuckle because he's suited for it. Like he, yeah, he he's is. a dog. I've he's told him that before. Yeah, he's definitely suited for that. Uh, uh, and I feel like if he had debuted against pretty much anybody else they had at that level that Matt would have just smashed somebody. Well, um, I know that. I think he, Matt he did exactly what he did exactly what he needed to do. It's just that guy took it. Matt's a guy too. He's like me. I think he's in his head a lot. Like as far as the fight game goes, he's always in his head. I feel like this fight could be a major confidence booster for him because now he knows he can compete at the top level against yeah. real talent. Yeah, oh yeah, he he belongs there. He, he, had, he had that guy in some trouble a couple times. Mm -hmm. he had well, I think that times. he answered that question. We all wondered. We all thought Matt has potential, but could he do it? And he damn did, near did it. Like he he yeah. lost that fight, but I think I think he gained a lot from it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I like I love people. People give Matt a bad rap, man. People think he's too. Once you get to know Matt, man, he's really enjoyable to be around. He's really funny. That's, really That's the thing. Like I, Matt and I didn't get along at first. Like I think that like, he called me out. He wanted to fight me. I didn't know why. Like I didn't didn't realize what the deal with Matt Adams was until you know you meet him and you're just like, dude, just wants to fight everybody. The dude yeah, just yeah. he if loves you, the sport. If you promote anybody and say this is the man, Matt wants to come and prove that he's the man. That's what it, it's nothing personal. You guys knew and, who else was fighting BKFC? Who sent who sent people BKFC a, 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 a email? Jacob Ray. Really? I uh there's another one of our fighters that signed with BKFC, but I don't think we can talk about it yet. Um, really? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you yeah, I'll tell you after I'll tell you after Why no, don't, some one of our guys. No, you tell recently. us now like you did with the gender of my baby, and then we'll bleep it out. Yeah, so you I, tell didn't, us. I, didn't, I didn't know that was a secret. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, one more gender of our baby. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. One of the I'll say he's fought for us. He fought for us last year, professional boxer, and he is uh, now with BKFC, a like multi-fight deal. Uh, we'll we'll talk about it soon. What weight class? He'll be either heavyweight or cruiserweight. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Pro fighter. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're gonna move on down to our next fight, and this is a fight. Uh, Rex, you know both of these guys. We have another professional. Oh, sorry. Professional heavyweight <laughs> boxing match. Billy Poe from Moorhead, Kentucky. Still Billy undefeated. Bo. Billy Poe. He's still undefeated. One win, one draw. He is up Bro, against the Rhino, like Alex him. Davis, who is who now picked up his fourth win. He's got four, all four of his wins by knockout. Uh, coming into this fight with Billy Poe. Um, what do you think on this one, Rex? Okay, I want to say this first. Billy Poe looks like an average dude, bro. He looks like you could find him like the manager of like a Verizon, <laughs> like an AT and T manager. What Billy Poe looks like, but dude can fucking fight, man. Dude yeah. has, it has real technical ability. You know what I'm saying? How old is Billy? Thirty. Uh, yeah, he's he's probably in his mid thirties. I think maybe. Uh, I'm not. Well, well, he's, he's an older guy. Been man, around. But, you know, He's been around yeah. the sport forever. He's just jumped right. into boxing for fun, for the fun of it, I think, yeah. to kind of test himself. He comes, he he was, comes prepared, man. So Billy told me that his ground game is really good, but when he fights MMA, he wasn't, like, super comfortable on the feet. So he's doing some pro boxing, maybe some pro kickboxing, just to, you know, get that get that ring time, get that feel, and then uh, – Get back into the MMA with a with a stronger uh, stand up game to uh, to well, uh, complement his the nasty ground game that he has. Billy is technical on the feet. He comes prepared, man. He comes yeah. to fight. Mm -hmm. he's not scared. But the thing is, man, Alex Davis, big boy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't think Billy Poe's a natural heavyweight. I really don't. He's Alex not. Davis, 
Yeah, yeah Billy's Alex, not, not a natural heavyweight. Here's but. my question for you, though. Does Alex Davis hit harder than Brandon Connolly? And I think, I think, I think I, it's a different kind of power. Brandon Connolly has that fast twitch muscle, <laughs> bang, you know what I mean? Knock mm -hmm. you the fuck out power. Alex has lazy power, like George Foreman type power, not on that same kind of level. Alex hits hard. Farm he hits you power, it, like natural power. Yeah, just uh, big, yeah. fast. Mass strong, moves, work Alex hard, fucking has the kind of power that moves power. you around. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah, Conley's got that power that will uh, just rattle your brain and put you to sleep. Right. And I feel like if, if Alex can be smart, use his size, bulldog Billy, you know what I'm saying? Not let, not, not, don't let Billy get around him so much, you know what I'm saying? If, if Alex can use his size and his power and just his fucking sheer mass to manipulate Billy into where he wants him, and land clean shot. Alex is right, man. Alex is a Alex can box a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When Alex is right, I'm I'm gonna ride with my boy Alex. I train train with Alex. He's my he's my, my one of my buddies. I, one of the first guys I train with. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ride for Alex. I'm taking Alex regardless. But I think if Alex uses his size and his mass and manipulates Billy to where he wants him to be, as far as, and uses ring control and is not scared and, and moves his head. Like he did, like we saw in the Mikey Furnier fight. The Mikey Furnier fight was, was a different Alex Davis, uh, and then we, then, we, then we saw Mikey Furnier's not not no slouch, bro. As far as cardio goes, yeah, he is fucking. But uh, as far as but cardio, yeah, slouch. But but Alex comes prepared. He trains hard. Yeah. Um, Alex comes prepared and does what he needs to do and listens to his coaches in his corner. I think Alex is a very very good shot at knocking Billy Poe the fuck out. But at the same time. I don't see Billy Poe knocking Alex out. I really don't. Alex, I don't see him knocking him out. We've never seen Alex get put to sleep but one time. That's big, big boy DeJuan Callaway. Because Carter didn't put Alex to sleep, bro. You know? Yeah, he, he cut the closed, fuck out of him. Closed both yeah, of but, his but yeah. Big DeJuan Callaway, that's a fucking IBF, bro. Yeah, that's, that's a different breed there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like train but, with him, but you know, when I, when I look at this matchup, this is, you know, this matchup's brand new. You just announced it a couple days ago. And I've been thinking about it. I feel like Billy Poe is a really interesting and dangerous matchup for Alex Davis because of his speed, because of how technical he is. Yes. He has excellent footwork. You 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 hit the nail on the head. I think Alex is definitely he's got to fight like Tyson Fury fought Wilder in the second fight. Use mm -hmm. his clinch, lay on him, wear him that's, out. That's, that's, yes. I think that's the only way because if if Billy Poe is able to get on his bike. Use that footwork. I think he's going to box Alex up. I, th I think he's going to outpoint him. I, I, I just don't think Billy. I know anybody over 170 pounds can knock anybody in the world the fuck out if they hit him clean. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I think I don't think Billy Poe has that big heavyweight power like Alex but does. You know? We also saw Billy stop Stephen McBride, broke his jaw. But Stephen like McBride's not a natural heavyweight either. I don't think so. It's like five nine. You're right. I think I think it's Billy has clean shots, and I, I really yes. I, I think you're right. I don't see him stopping Alex. Alex is dog tough. My pick for that fight, and I usually don't pick him, but I think I think Billy Poe by decision. I'm gonna take Alex. I'm gonna take Alex Davis by second round TKO. Funny story. I tried to get this fight approved for five rounds because I know Billy didn't have enough fights for six. Commission said we can't do five rounds. It's got to be four. So it's four rounds? <laughs> it's four rounds. Uh, okay, I'm more comfortable. Yeah, now. I want to do five. I was like, hey, I just want to make sure there's no – we don't get a draw. <laughs> but uh, And i tell you the reason I'm picking Billy, the main reason, is because of the display of toughness and heart that he showed against Connolly. Like, that's why I think – I really don't think that he's going to get hit any harder by Davis than he got hit by Connolly. Yeah. He stayed up. Like the the way he was able to stay up and fight to a draw, that that I'm sold on Billy Poe po after that. One thing we always say: styles make fights, and uh, both of Billy's first two opponents, come, they came forward, right? They both they came forward. They had their heads in Billy's chest. Billy's got a sick uppercut. Alex Davis doesn't march forward with his head in your chest. So it's the fucking air. Billy's, <laughs> Alex's head is back. He's he never sticks it in there. So we're gonna see a different Billy. We're gonna we're we're gonna be seeing Billy having a fight from the outside because his first two opponents were getting in close, not knowing that Billy, you know, Billy's my size. He's Billy's like six four. 
and uh, prefers Billy to ain't play no six close. Four. Billy's six four. Billy's six one. <laughs> tell tell, <laughs> that, tell that to Bill. I will. Uh, he looks six one to me. Everybody looks Every- six one to you. I look five nine to you, Rex. I don't know. Billy's just, I don't know. Billy can fuck a box, though, man. Yeah. That's a, I, I, don't, I hate to call him. I'm getting the Alex just out of my, me and my buddy. You know what I'm saying? I want to see gonna, Alex get it done. I hope it's going to be interesting. Cool. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting fight. It's a, if, it's a different style. It's a different style fight um, that I've seen either guy have. I mean, Alex has been fighting these big, heavy hitters, and now he's got Billy who's going to be coming in boxing. Billy's been fighting aggressive fight. Steven was coming forward trying to bully him. Brandon was coming in trying to bully him. So he's been fighting these aggressive guys. Alex is going to sit back and box. So it's good. we're going to see a different version of Billy. We're going to see Alex for the first time not fighting somebody that's a big bulldog with power. So it's going to be a boxing match. Um, I tell you see, what, and I, I feel know. like yeah. that plays into Billy's favor. I feel like Alex needs to make it less of a boxing match. He needs to make it gritty and ugly. He needs to stay in his face, use his yeah. clinch wear on him and i think i think if he sits back and tries to box with billy billy's going to be faster billy's going to be more technical and clean billy is fast yeah i think um, if, if if alex fights billy the way he sparred me like my sport alex i think i'll zoom out a little bit all right we uh we got rudely cut off there and had to go and get the uh premium <laughs> go get the premium version of zoom uh to continue this interview um, but we are back again. Um, and Rex is. This no, I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. I'm here. <laughs> um, He's getting these. So Rex, yeah, Rex was giving his opinion on uh, well, the Billy and Alex. Um, <clears throat> so we'll move on to Rex. You wanted to talk about Zane and Joe. Zane Fry, who is a uh, five fight professional now, and against Joe Thompson, who's had four professional bouts. And uh, this Correct. is a rematch um, yes. from August where Zane won a unanimous decision. Okay, so I trained with Joe up at Figure Four Fight Academy with Tyler Smith. And uh, I sparred Joe, let him work, you know what I'm saying? Joe's got some power. He's very wild, you know, but he's got better. He really has. Mm-hmm. He's, he, re- he tries, man, you know what I'm saying? He's got better. He's an older guy. You know what I'm saying? He has that, but that, but that grown man strength is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Well, he you know was cracking Zane Fry in the first fight. Like Zane Fry, you know, he he looked really good, but his head movements lacking, and he was Correct. getting cracked quite a bit by Joe. So you know, it's not like Joe doesn't have a chance in this fight. No, no, no nothing at all. <laughs> I, with the Zane, uh, Zane is young guy. He trains hard, man. Yeah, but uh. I don't think he knows how to put it all together yet. Maybe he needs some better coaching or something. Uh, I like Zane a lot. God bless. God bless. Hoff. Cliven. I think Zane coaches himself right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that can only take you so far. I know it from experience. You, you know? learn, I mean, you learn, but you learn at a slower pace. You learn usually right. from making mistakes. And so that's how not having bodies to spar with. Sparring. Yes. Yeah. We yes. all know that, how much sparring is important. And it comes like things like head movement, the things that he's lacking in. I think yeah, he's got he's got he's got people there, but he's like I believe Zane's the head coach though. So he's right. I mean he's got guys to spar with, and he's got another pro there to spar with. Now, not the, saying what, he's got, what, he, pro. what he got going on is not a bad thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm he's glad got, he got something going thing. on. Yeah, but but I think he needs to you know get under a, a good coach and take it real serious. And he has a good he he has a good shot at cleaning the floors with Joe. But at the same time, Joe cracked, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Joe can Joe can put him to sleep if he Joe can home. eat. Joe can eat. Joe's like a tank, man. Joe's going to Joe's keep tough, coming. bro. We saw against the first the first time I saw him get finished. He uh, he was fighting um when he fought for us. He fought uh, Brian Gideon's guy, uh, the one who uh, told that little mixed boy. How, told everybody how to lose weight. Uh, that mixed boy. As he been? I don't think so, but I don't know. Uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan, I uh, can't remember his last name. But I but, trained uh, with Joe for that fight a little bit. I yeah, trained a little bit. Joe, Joe came into that with a bad injury. He had like Joe had like a, a cracked rib or something coming into that fight, and uh, he just uh, he was hurt. And that's the only time I've seen Joe uh, not finish a fight. But he fought Zane. He got. He got hit a lot. He got he got put down once. He kept coming. He fought Hamza. 
that was a really good fight. Uh, it was back and forth. I mean, Joe landed some shots there, but he ate some bombs and just kept. Well, he can take it, man. Joe, Joe can take has it. some guts. I mean, you go, you think he's fought two guys from strong style, you know, and, yeah. and he's a guy you would never expect to be a pro fighter with four fights right now. Like he, yeah. he's he's climbing up the pro ranks. I don't, I don't know what his record is at this point, but he's still getting big pro experience against really tough guys. Yeah. He had seven amateur fights. He was four and three as an amateur. Uh, they were all rough and rowdy, I believe. Um, so yeah. they were all one minute rounds. They went straight from the one minute rounds up to the three minute rounds. So the big, uh, big change. Um, I think I think Joe's got a shot. I think I, I I can't pick that one. I would like to see. Um, no offense to Joe if he watches this. We trained a couple times, Joe. You know, I can see Zane do it. He's a young, up and coming guy. You know I mean he yeah. and he loves the sport. You know. Uh, I like to see him get it done. I really would. I like, 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 like to see Zane get it done. I can't make a prediction. I don't yeah. think either one of them knocks each other out. I really don't. Uh, four round fight, you said? Four rounds, yeah. Yeah, I don't think either, either one of them knocks each other out. Now, uh, I'm going to move on to. No, uh, yeah. This is a fight, kickboxing match. Both of these guys are potential opponents for you, whether it's boxing, kickboxing, or whatever. But William Honecker versus Dakota Fat Thor Bagley. Right. Yeah. Well, we've seen, seen Fat both Thor. Of these guys. Yeah. Fat Thor. Joe, Joe, Joe Perry said it himself. Fat Thor hits like a tank, bro. Yeah. So as long as we can avoid, as, as long as I think if if Honecker takes a real, real serious, we, we saw him in his last fight take a loss to Michael Watts. Michael Watts, vastly. But more that's that's opponent. Michael Watts, though. It's not <laughs> right. Vastly more experienced opponent. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. uh, Watts got it done pretty fast, as well predicted. Um. If Honaker takes it real, he trained at a real gym, man. He trained at a, at a real gym with real fighters. If, if he takes it real serious, I think he's a good shot against Fat Thor. Fat Thor, um, his fundamentals aren't amazing yet, but he trains hard, I'd say, as well. Dude's big, big heavyweight. Uh, shorter, how tall is he? Probably like six foot? Yeah, about six foot, yeah. Incredible beard. Beautiful beard, oh my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful beard. Uh, I'd like to see... I'd like to see uh, Fat Thor get it done just because I like his name, Fat Thor. But um, you hear that? You hear that, Honaker? You need a better nickname if you want Rex to pick you. Yeah, thanks, Honaker. What is me, his, me what was his talk, nickname? We, we, we talked a little bit. And, yeah, uh, I can't remember that. Nickname. Well, I, I like Honaker. I like I like both guys. I like to see Fat. It's Thor something get it done. funky. It's like Chupacabra. Yeah. Yeah. Something but weird. I'll tell you what, it's two guys that I really like as well. They've got great personalities. Both are really funny, fun to talk to. Very fun. And yes. both are solid fighters. Like, you know, even though we saw Honick early once against Michael Watts, I really think he had really impressive kicks. I think his kicks are going to have the advantage in this fight. And I think Fat Thor has better hands. Yeah, so it's going to be an interesting match. Should be Honaker should have the size. He's uh Honaker's what six three maybe. He's a big man. He really is a big man. Six three, six four, probably every bit of two sixty five, two seventy. If Honaker comes in in good shape with with good power behind his behind his punches and you know slick ability, I yeah. I can see him getting it done. I'd like to see Fat Thor get it done though. I like to see him win, win by knockout, maybe the first or second round. That's how I, I'd like to see it go down. So how do you see the fight going if uh, these two fight, and then after this you fight the winner and the loser at the same time? Um, could I, could I fight Honaker and Thor at the same time? Uh, um, with box, a very boxing. large, with a very large stick, a very <laughs> large stick, and a can of bear mace. I think I get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could get it done with a very large stick and yeah. a can of bear mace. And and um, if you if you let me throw Jacob Ray at him, I could definitely get it done. But yeah, these are two guys <laughs> potentially. So Rex is uh, you know, Rex is coming back from an injury himself. He's back to training though, but. You know, we're looking at seeing Rex in August at Madison. And, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say he's fighting one of these guys, but potentially he could. Um, could see either one of these guys. Um, let's see. Moving down, moving down. I'm going to try to find another fight we were talking. Oh, yeah, you want to talk about Eric Mon versus Tyrone Kitchen in kickboxing. All right. So, Eric Mon, that's her boy. That's our boy, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got to ride for our boy. Mm -hmm. Eric Mond fucking brings it, bro. You know he does. Yeah. That's why he must be first fight, bro. He must be one of the first fights. So Eric Mond fucking brings it. And he's there to fight, bro. And Eric has slick ability. Eric is not a real big power puncher, man. 
you know, he's our, I, and I don't think Tyrone is either. On, I don't know much about Tyrone. I know a lot about Eric. You know what I mean? I've seen Eric go to war in the gym. Eric's tough as they come, bro. Straight dog. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we saw what he, he saw, we saw him fight Colin Caprini, man. Colin Caprini takes his shit serious. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And drop Colin Caprini. Eric has some sick kicks, man. He has some mm-hmm. really really slick kicks, and he has good technical ability with his hands. Good footwork. Uh, Eric comes in in shape, man. And he's and he's a problem for anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get Eric in shape, man. I've never seen him fight out of shape. And the improvement that Eric made, man. I think Eric has yeah. like the fastest improvement of anybody in New Line ever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think uh, Eric comes Mass, in in shape, yeah. and he, he's, he's a fucking problem for yeah. anybody. I'm riding for Eric 100 percent on this fight. Tyrone King. Eric. Eric's a guy that when he gets something in his head, he can't get it out of there. When he got right. that loss, he was coming in to fight one time. He was lit- he's a big fight fan. And that in the beginning, that's all he was. He's a fan. He's the one to get his taste. He's like, I'm gonna go in and box one time just to say I did it, and then I'm gonna go back to being a, a being a fan and and just you know loving watching it. He went in and got beat up and uh, pissed him off, and uh, he just he he was like, I got to come back. I got to have a better performance than that. And uh, just kind of fell in love with it. <laughs> fell in I'm love glad. with the grind I'm of it. I'm glad he has yeah. this, man. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm glad he has this. Now, Tyrone, um, I haven't seen Tyrone finish anybody on the feet. Uh, I believe his wins have been on the ground. Um, he's uh, he's he's an all-around. You know, he's pre- pretty decent all-around fighter. He's like not the best <laughs> kickboxer, not the best grappler, but he can do it all. Um and um, if this fight was MMA, I would, you know, Tyrone would be giving Eric some, tr- some trouble because uh, Eric's definitely a stand-up guy. But right. Tyrone's coming into this with a huge, what, you know, whatever he'll lack in the in the boxing department against Eric, Tyrone's got a lot of height and reach on him too. And Tyrone's quick. Um, Tyrone can yeah, move. Eric Tyrone will get in move. there. And Tyrone is tough as hell. I mean, even if Eric's landing those shots – like Tyrone's not going to quit. Tyrone's not going to take a knee. Tyrone is Tyrone's going to. I've seen him eat bombs and just keep coming. Uh, we've seen fight. him. We've seen him fight Eli Hawkins, and that was yeah. a close fight. It, it was a yeah. split. Tyrone showed that he's got that dog in him. Yeah, he definitely does. Yeah, Tyrone is not going to quit. And uh, right. And his last so, fight, you know, I think uh, he 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 won that fight on the feet almost mm-hmm. the entire time. But at one point, he got rocked really bad. I think he had to dig deep yeah. in that fight to pull off that win. So I, I really like this matchup. I think you got two of the guys with the most heart in the division facing off against each other. I don't know who's going to win. Eric's going to have to get inside. Like you said, Tyrone's the bigger man here. Yeah, yeah. Tyrone Eric will get inside. Guy. Eric will get inside. And uh, Eric sneaky, Eric sneaky, mm-hmm. very sneaky. And he's tricky, yeah. and Eric doesn't have doesn't have a, have a real strong pattern because Eric is coming at you with a lot of different looks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's throwing a lot of their he, he, he'll, he'll he'll go from a uh, orthodox stance to a southpaw and kick you in the liver, bro. It's so lit, so weird. You know what I'm saying? And he'll he'll, I, and he'll I try love, crazy shit. That's the thing. He's so uh, he's he he doesn't hold back. That's the thing with Not Eric. At all. <laughs> He's fighting with all his heart the entire time, and he's mm-hmm. been in so many wars because of it. He's yes. become one of the most exciting fighters we have at New mm-hmm. Line. More, yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe the most exciting, in my opinion. I think I might have to agree with you. I really do. Eric Mon, every time we know he's going to fight, I'm excited. I Not just too. because he's my friend, but because yeah. I know he's going to go to war. And it's so funny because looking back just two years ago, almost to the day was his debut in Huntington. And that was a fight after we saw it. I thought this guy probably shouldn't be fighting. He right. proved me wrong in the biggest way, and he couldn't be more of an inspiration. Yeah. I think the thing, Eric's a small middleweight, honestly. You know, yeah. Eric is not a big middleweight. I think Eric, he carries around a little bit of a body. Eric's in good shape. Eric has oh, Eric can cut to 155, no right. problem. Great. Do he, Eric, I, I, think, Eric I, think he, I think he's champion at 155. Eric likes to eat and drink beer too Love much. It. That's his problem. Ain't nothing wrong with that, boys. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Eric could walk around at 155 if he if he uh, would really get disciplined on the diet, but he loves food. And that and that's Ain't nothing wrong Eric, with that. Eric's really excited about this event. Like not I mean, not only is he fighting, but smoking Jays is running the concession. So <laughs> Eric's pumped about that. <laughs> and he's and he's on a he's trying to lose weight right now for the fight. So he told me 
Uh, he needed to be early on the card so he could fight and then go get some smoking jays and then come out and watch the rest of the card. <laughs> so what number is this? NLC 23? Two. Two NLC two. 22, barbecue and beatdowns. Yeah. <laughs> and blowjob. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Send me the back $25. Send me the back $25. No, I'm just kidding. God, uh, Cut that out if you want to. But, uh, no, we're leaving yeah, it in. People one more fight we want to talk about, wasn't there? Wasn't there? I think you were wanting to talk about one of the Starchers. I don't remember which one. Sheldon Preston Carter. Starcher Preston versus Sheldon Chance Grillet. That one, yeah, correct, yeah. Chance Grillet. The rematch. Yes. Chance Grillet lost that the first fight, I believe, correct? No, uh, no, no. no. This was Preston Starcher's. It was it was his second fight or his debut, debut, correct? His debut. His debut fight, he fought Chance Grillet, who's a brown belt. Mm -hmm. Got arm bar barred almost right out of the gate, but he cracked. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chance Grill's a re legit martial artist, bro. He really that is. As legit as they come, you know. Great kicks. You know, he lost the title to Chase Thomas recently. This right. will be his comeback fight, and it's a rematch against the guy he beat a while back. But Preston's come a long way since then, and he's yeah. a different guy. Those boys, both, him and his brother, both, they're, they're dogs, man. They're yeah. tough. They come to fight. Every time they take it seriously, they're all in. They're training all the time with each other, and it's perfect to have a brother that's in it too. Like they're pushing each other, and you can see right. the improvement every fight. They're both wild too. They're, they're, they fight very similarly, man. I think they're, mm -hmm. they're both pretty pretty wild fighters, and they throw big crazy kicks and stuff. Sometimes like not so much crazy kicks, but they, they throw big open kicks. And I don't know. I think um, I think that's a they that's are Sugar fight. Sean O'Malley fans, and it shows when they fight. Yeah, definitely. Just that's like perfect, perfect way to just like it. Devin Stanley is a uh, Stephen Thompson fan, and when Devin fights, you see Stephen Thompson in there. Correct. So yes. It's the same way. Correct. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a, do that's you think? Fight. Do you think that Preston Starcher's grown enough? That's the question. Do you think that he gets the win over Grill at this time? I would like to see Grillet get it. I would, I would like to see Grillet get it. I don't know start the Starcher brothers that well. I've met Grillet a couple times. We tried. Didn't we try with him one time? Yeah, yeah, he came down. Yeah, yeah. I like. He's a really, really nice guy. Legit martial artist. Legit, legit grappler. It's an MMA match. Legit grappler. Uh, I think the ground game is going to be a, a in the big favor of uh, Grillet. I really do. Yeah. I, but I'm pretty sure them boys train on the ground too, pretty hard. They man. do. They it, do it, it well. Years. Ever since he got tapped by Grillet, I think it lit a fire under him to get mm -hmm. his jiu-jitsu better. Right. We saw him, uh, he tapped Brittany Vaughn one of the last times we saw him in about a minute and a half. It was a very short fight, beautiful heel hook. So we've seen him him change his ground game a lot. I think it's going to be a lot different fight. A lot more of a uh, back and forth battle than it was the first time. I'd kind of like to see Starcher pull it out so we can get a trilogy going. <laughs> I, I like a rivalry, man. I really do. I, I like a good rivalry. I'm this, saying that this, rivalry. Was a fight, this is a fight. I didn't think we were going to see a second one because Preston went down to 135. Chance was fighting up at 145. But Chance wasn't cutting weight at 45. Like Chance was like coming in like natural and, and just throwing down. Uh, and he's taking some really tough too. fights outside of New Line, too. He's so he's been, been active. Yeah. Yeah. Chance has been going to Pittsburgh and fighting some legit guys that are probably going to be in UFC or PFL in the next few years. So Chance has, you know, fought some really good competition. But I was, so I was trying to set up a fight at 145 that I found very interesting. And uh, I was trying to get Chance Gorilla versus Sam Kinker at 145. They have the same record. They uh very similar. They're both karate black belts. They both have what brown belts in jujitsu. I was like, this is the perfect match. But chance and that's when Chance let me know. He's like, hey man, I'm cutting to I'm cutting to bantamweight. Like, all right. So And I think that's a smart move for him. I really do. I think he looks is. really good at Bantamweight. <laughs> One forty five, you see that in that Chase Thomas fight. Like Chase Chase was just so yeah. solid and like yeah, tough to take strong, down. Big and strong mass, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Chase was a Chase is definitely a stronger 145, and um, I don't know how that would have went on the ground. I mean, Ch Chase's wrestling is great, and then uh, but well, I know Chance, as well. I mean, Chance Chance wanted Chase it on the Thomas ground, but you, you're not getting away. 
Yeah, you know, no. Chase makes a big cut to that 145. I don't yeah. think you can be a successful mixed martial artist anymore without making a little bit of a weight cut. It's just yeah. hard to fight guys that walk in there way bigger than you. Way kind of how we saw Machida and Shogun before. Or, yeah, neither one of those guys were really cutting at 205. Machida eventually started cutting the middleweight, but for a long time, Machida was walking around at like 205. Three, two, or four, and fight. Or uh, Frank, Frankie Edgar, when he was one fifty five yeah. champ, he didn't cut at all, and then we eventually saw him drop down to one forty five, and then I think he even made. I it think the reason. I think the reason he did that is because UFC didn't have those lower weight classes at the time. Yeah, you're right. I think they didn't so, pick up uh, until they bought out the W or WEC. They bought them, but they didn't bring them over for for a while. Yeah. I they think brought, who was the brought, first uh, the so first they featherweight them out, champion was yeah. Jose Aldo. Yeah, so I believe they UFC bought WEC and then they uh they brought over like everything they had above uh 45 so they brought over the lightweights and that's when you had Ben Henderson and the, and uh Pettis, Pettis and all those guys they all came over you had the uh or lost the welter, lost the welter weights. Um, but then you still had guys outside the UFC like you had, Faber. And was it Chell Sonnen, Sonnen and those guys all came from yeah. the WC, Chell right? Chell was a WEC champion, I believe. Paulo, whatever happened to Paulo Filo, that dude was legit. He was the one that was having weird – wasn't he fighting Sonnen? He was just looking off into the crowd like he just wasn't I, there mentally. I remember Paulo Filo. He was a cop, too, in was Brazil. At the, yeah, I think he was a cop full-time – while he was a UFC fighter, guys, does anyone anyone remember Pedro Hizzo? Does any, oh, you guys yeah. remember him? Dude, that's the yeah. dude, you remember him. That was a fucking man. Yeah, his time, rivalry bro. with Josh Barnett is one Crazy. of the, two of the best fights that you can ever Crazy. watch. That mm -hmm. fucker kicks so hard, bro. God, he kicks so. Imagine getting kicked by him. God Almighty, he kicks so hard, Pedro Hizzo. He was imagine, really the imagine, first. Imagine if he had that stand up ability, but he had also like. Had twenty years of wrestling. <laughs> God, what goat? R yeah. Really, go a goat, a, a Fedor level goat. Yeah. That, that era, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all the fights I want to talk about, guys. I mean, as far as big fights, a lot of these guys, other other guys on the card, they're zero and zero. You know, they we got, you know, we got some other big fights, but I don't think Rex finds the smaller guys too interesting. <laughs> I don't put it on. Put it on me, buddy. It's like I'm. I'm it's, blaming Elijah. He, he's. It's he's, like he's on, on his menstrual cycle. It's like Rex boot, is a Rex is a size ants, right? The I'm a size doesn't doesn't care about the ants. The ants. Yeah, <laughs> the, these one forty fivers. They all look like insects. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these ants are mean, bro. You got little Mitchell Vaughn, bro. That's my boy. That's right the yeah. fight we need to make. We need to have Rex White fight five one thirty fivers at the same should... time or back to back. At the you, same you, time, you introduce Rex. Like, yeah, this guy's a you know, ten and zero at one twenty five. Rex is like, huh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my leg, thing. Uh, that's my question for you before we end it, Rex. How many one twenty fivers do you think you could take on before they overwhelm you? Bare knuckle. Yeah, let's sure. do bare knuckle. Street rules. Are, are we on concrete? You're in. Yeah, sure. You're in the cafeteria at a mental hospital. <laughs> your 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 comfort zone. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if we're on concrete and I'm naked, if I'm if I'm naked, I'm more comfortable. Seriously, come, I get wild. Okay. When I'm naked. Everybody, I'm naked. naked. Okay, everybody, everybody, they're naked too. Everybody's naked. All Does right, that make I'll, it more uncomfortable for you? Yeah. All no, right, I do, the, I do good in uncomfortable situations. So, all right, a bunch of one twenty fivers in nightgowns, and you're naked. Oh, 30. 30 of them. 30 of them? 30 of them, probably. 120, 125, yeah. How good are they? Amateur, average. Like, 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 1 0, 125. Let's just They're say all average. at the level of Chance Grillet and Preston Starcher. Oh, God. Oh, not very many, probably. Four. Let's say, <laughs> let's just say your average, the average guys you see walking out of Speedway with a Mountain Dew in their hand. Oh, God. 30. 30 of them. No problem. <laughs> Thirty of them, bro. They're one hit each. Not oh, even the boom, not boom. even the gas station champions. Just your average guy walking out of the gas station. If I'm if I'm naked and really sweating, skull. if I'm naked and really sweating, they can't really grab me good and tackle mm -hmm. me. I think that's thirty of them. So yeah, you're greased use, up. You're greased, I'm greased up. I'm greasy and naked. Now the thing is, if they got jackets and stuff, they can get a hold of you. That grease won't I help tell you. you but there's jackets. nothing to me more scary than a greased up Rex White. 
<laughs> and naked, and it's not, and it's dark. It put Crocs on. You run me. into a naked, greased up Rex White in a dark alley. Go the other way. <laughs> oh, you saw I'd, this. I'd hate bro. to see. I'd hate to see Rex White buck naked, greased up, run into the Undertaker. Just running out. full speed. There wouldn't be. You. There wouldn't be anybody there to pull Rex off the Undertaker. <laughs> Oh God! Y'all are horrible. <laughs> imagine though. Imagine that's the last thing you see before you die is just wrecks Many running full have. speed at you. <laughs> Many have naked. Hey. <laughs> Many have. No, imagine no. Rex playing a game of King of the Hill though. If he, King of the Hill. If he Did you ever play slip, football or anything? If he happens Rex? to slip yeah. and he's all greased up. Rex is gone. Dude, I was good at football. I played. I played buddy league. I played to my last year at eighteen till I was thirteen. I was going to play through middle school, but. I lived so far away from the school where I didn't have a ride with parents' work. You know what I'm saying? Most but, people don't know this, though. Rex White, his senior year, was five feet six, and then he hit his growth spurt. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was five six in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they didn't, they wouldn't let you run the ball with their Rex. No. Dude, my, it got to a point, <laughs> and my, my mom had to bring my birth certificate to every game I've had as a football player. <laughs> Seriously, because I was bigger than the coaches, man, at 13. Yeah. I was 6'3", 6'2", walking around uh, 13 years old. You tackle somebody, and, and then their dad must have fought you. <laughs> but that, that, but Daniel Browning's dad fought Gary. My, my dad never came. Piece of shit. But, um, uh, my dad never came to any of my games. But the, Daniel Browning's dad, Gary Browning, fought for me multiple times, bro. Because yeah. I, I tackled this boy and broke his arm from Gilbert. And his parents would come up and start talking shit to me and stuff. And Gary Browning never fought him. On the bottom of the field, cops got called. Buddy League football, bro. That's how serious they get, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy League anything. They go crazy. But no, well, we're just fights in this All world. right. Well, Rex I think Reed that's it looks, for me, boys. Yeah. I'm ready for bed. Yeah. Uh, next card, March 9th. We've got a bunch of cards coming up. We're going to see this man, Rex White, on August 10th at Madison, West Virginia. Thought it was the 20th. I August wish. 10th. In Madison, most likely see me there. 90, 95% sure. He'll Everything goes well. You know what I'm saying? If he's not fighting, he's sneaking in one of the back doors because Rex White has never bought a ticket to an event anywhere. I have definitely. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Nah, I bought one for years twice. You'd think you think it would be go. tougher sneaking into places the only, being that big. The only times Rex bought a ticket, he didn't go because he had COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, when, not for when real, he actually I, shows up, he don't get a ticket. I can sneak in, bro. I can sneak. I'm a good sneaker. I snuck Rex. in. You know, you know how tight tough man security is, bro. I snuck yeah. in there. Bro, I snuck Rex in there. I lie, Rex Rex I lie, I lie like a motherfucker. I'm a good liar. I lie to him. <laughs> bro, I work in maintenance. Yeah. I'm working, I'm working concession. I got lost. <laughs> hey, if they, if they don't let you in, just go get a ladder and just walk in. So I'll anybody, it, they, I'll they, see you at the next uh, UFC. You'll be one of those security guys just walking the fighters in. It'll just be you. <laughs> Why am I here? Hey, why the fuck is he there, bro? <laughs> why the, what then the you see him at the White House. <laughs> oh, Mally next to me just walking out. I'll be on the Rex, camera. Rex over here just holding a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> ladder like a hammer or something god jeremy tony with me yeah <laughs> jeremy tony with me y'all ready to wrap it up i That's think it. so i think All we're right. ready to go Lots for anybody time. that hung out with us this long we appreciate it well we'll be back All next right. week with another guest hopefully one just as interesting and as charismatic as mr rex white before we go, I got a bone to pick with Keith No. We were supposed uh, to have awards. Yeah, I know. I haven't finished them, man. I need, I need to do that. So. And I believe I was promised an award. You were promised an award. <laughs> yeah. Who promised you an award? Me. <laughs> you. I promised myself. You promised yourself an award. Yeah. I want I'm a personality you, of the year. I'm going to send you a link on where to order trophies for yourself. <laughs> I gave my medal away. My medal from the five, my last five. I gave my medal away. Who'd you give it to? My friend Brandy. <laughs> she might know nothing friend. about mine. I just gave it to her. I was like, here, you can have it. <laughs> like, That's so sweet. Thank you. She probably went and lost it. She probably already lost it, man. <laughs> she loves nerf pills. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> She'll never uh, say this to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> but right, yeah, let's wrap ready. it up. Boys. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right, Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you soon.